Dang, Netflix is doing it. Netflix, Warner Brothers, I applaud. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Greg Bernard, BNY with Greg Bernard, here at the fabulous Ripley's, believe it or not. In Times Square, I mean, look at all this cool stuff that surrounds your boy. Now, here's a bit of news. Check it out. BNY with Greg Bernard features entertainment news, interviews, and everyday fun facts. If you want entertainment, check out BNY with Greg Bernard. So Netflix has announced that they're going to be working with Eddie Murphy on a new series. All right. Well, it's not a series. It's more like a movie or a bi Now, this is the age-old question. Is it biopic or biopic? A lot of people say it's biopic. I like to say it's biopic. All right. But let's not go with what I like. Let's go with what's right. Anyway, Netflix, Eddie Murphy, they have teamed up for a new project based on Rudy Ray Morris. 1970s comedian, musician, couldn't get a whole lot of work back in the day. So guess what? He made up his own character. Dolo Ma! That's right. Eddie Murphy is going to portray Rudy Ray Morris. Photography, the project has already started filming up in L.A. Guess who else is going to be in there? Mike Epps. I like Mike Epps. A whole lot of other African-American comedians. But this name just stood out to me. Wesley Snipes. Now listen. Wesley, you have not made me laugh since Tu Wong Fu. I better laugh right now. I don't want to see no more Expendables for another year or two. I don't want to see any more straight to DVD movies. I like this. You're teaming up with Eddie Murphy, Mike Epps, Rudy Ray Morris, comedian back in the day, hardcore brother also. Also has some friends too. I wonder which one you're going to pay Wesley, but you know what? Props to you. Anyway, let's get to our next news segment. I'm just gonna say, Psh. Greg, why are you Psh. Wonder Woman? Need I say more? Last year, it broke box office records, $822 million. Wonder Woman, 1984, okay? We all know that she's fighting Cheetah, right? One villainess, one superhero. We all know the rules, right? No CGI needed, not that much. Anyway, Gal Jado. Is it Gadet or Jado? Gado. Oh, I always keep messing up her name. I'm sorry, Gal. I still love you. Anyway, principal photography has taken place. Project is getting underway. Warner Brothers, I'm telling you right now, do not over CGI this film, okay? I know you got photography just happened, uh, and, and, and she's fighting Cheetah. You know, Patty Jenkins is still directing it, and... I'm just telling you right now, from all the deets that I'm reading, okay, it's supposed to be expanding on a new adventure. What new adventure is there going to be? Wonder Woman fighting the cheetah. You're scaring me now that you're putting in your press release new adventure. Anyway, keep it simple. Keep it clean. It may hate $822, ah, $822 million last year. Less CGI. I want to see more fighting. Anyway, guys. If you want your latest and greatest in entertainment news, entertainlinks.com, go onto the website. Also, you want to come hang out with your boy here? Get a couple of shekels, ripleysnewyork.com. Get your discounts, get your coupons. Check out that new relic exhibit. New relic exhibit? What? Go on the website and check it out here on BNY with Greg Bernard. So you just got off the plane a couple of hours from Sweden? Yeah. Like you still have jet lag? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. All right, too bad. We're <laughs> going to do the show anyway. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Greg Bernard, here with Jasmine Cara. Yes. <laughs> if you don't know who she is, you should know, okay? Swedish pop icon. I'm calling you an icon now before you become an icon. This Aww. way, when you do become an icon and you get your Grammy, you'll say, I remember Greg. I'll be like, yes, can I get another exclusive? And then we'll just be in the back of your trailer somewhere, hopping it up, sipping on Perrier, eating chocolates. I said Perrier, so you can give me some free sparkling water. <laughs> anyway, Jasmine, don't lie to me. That's your that that's one of your biggest like videos. What's what's going on with that song? Where did that song come from? Well, um, I come from a blues background, or mm -hmm. uh, at least that's where my heart is most, I think. And uh, but you know, I think that that song came because it was like it was a great mix of pop and blues 
to me and yeah, it was my first own written that came on the album, so. Now see, you wrote that, so that means that there's a story behind it. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me the abbreviated version. Uh, of that song or yeah, the story of the story all? behind the song. <laughs> well, uh, actually, uh, I went to LA for the first time and mm -hmm. co-wrote with a bunch of people. And the first two people I wrote with was Scott Stevens and mm -hmm. Daniel D'Amico. Oh wow! And we, yeah, we put that song together very quick, and it just felt like, you know, I think usually th those songs that becomes the best is mm -hmm. those you put the less uh, effort into. Effort, yeah. Wow. It's, it's so funny, but I really noticed that, you know, some songs you work so hard for them and you really believe so hard in them, but they don't really hardly make it to the radio. But those who you just like have fun and do very quick is usually the ones that is most organic success. and everything. Yeah. So how did you realize you could sing? Were you like in a bathroom, you're like, ah, <laughs> and then you hit that high note like Mariah Carey? <laughs> See, I can't even hear it. No, I mean, I never really, it's not that I realized, you know, but it was more that I thought it was very fun mm -hmm. first. Uh, so my first, uh, the first time I performed was on my 11th birthday. And uh, I think no one expected me to be a singer. Like mm -hmm. my parents were like, "What? You sing?" I like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, when I got on stage that time, because it was like for a talent competition in my hometown, it was okay. like long ago, and I just felt immediately like I belonged on the stage. Right. Something happened, you know. Like I can be shy and or like I in reality, or I don't mm -hmm. know how to say it. But as soon as I got on stage, it was like this is. This is who I this am. This is home. Yeah, this is you. Exactly. Um, so, but first it was more like a fun thing for me to do, to perform and sing. And But then I stopped in my teenage time. Okay. Because uh, I, it's a bunch of things happens. You know, puberty, I went yeah. to a very destructive relationship. Yeah. Etc. And actually that, and so that time I stopped doing music because uh, a lot, lot of things that happened. And what but pushed you back into it? Yeah, well, actually, yeah, actually, it's, it's a long story, but what happened was it went so deep, this relationship, mm -hmm. uh, deep into, like, misery <laughs> that mm -hmm. I ended up in a mental clinic. There was not anything really you could do there, you know? In, yeah. But one, uh, one day, there was uh, my caretaker came in mm -hmm. to my room with a guitar and asked me, hey, you, do you want to try to play? Like, yeah. he, he tried to everyone to find something they like to do, just... Yeah. to make them feel better at the mm -hmm. moment, you know? So first I was like, no, I don't think I can do this, you know? I lost my confidence completely mm -hmm. before that, of course, because, you know, you're not mentally where you're supposed yeah, to be. Right, right. Yeah, So he came in to me with a guitar and I couldn't, you know, first, you know, it was just standing there. Yeah. And I started playing and I just c cried like crazy. And that's, I think, the moment where I realized that you know, th there's something I want to wake up to now. Yeah, so music you know? became your medicine, basically. Yeah, exactly. But wow, it's that's time, what we're going you know? to title this episode. Music became your medicine. <laughs> yeah. The Jasmine Carr story <laughs> here on BNY with Greg Bernard. I guess, what would you say to all of the female artists or all of the females that are out there, all of the little girls, all of the young ladies who are trying to find their way in the music or into music? They're in the music industry or find their way into this profession. What would you say yeah. to all the girls? Well, I would say many things. <laughs> uh, let me think two seconds. Well, first of all, uh, to any musician in this industry mm -hmm. is to really know that, you know, that you want this and why you want this. Because mm -hmm. that usually gives you the answer to why you should keep pushing for it, you know? Mm -hmm. For female artists, uh, I think we all, all female artists have been in situation most at least where where we are under uh, how do i say that we, we get used a lot yeah you know like there can be someone saying oh i can give you a great deal if you come home with me tonight or you know right. stuff like that so uh, they my, like the males try to prey upon you yeah so you gotta yeah. be always on alert always be on alert and also is to never you know don't be scared to speak up for yourself right if if someone tries to 
to get come down on to it, you yeah. than just you don't, yeah. punch him in the face like Jasmine. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> Boom. Sucker. <laughs> and then sing my song. Exactly. So what is the new? What is uh, your project that you're working on now? Uh, working on an album now. Yeah. Yeah. Spe- first of all, a uh, single. Okay. Yeah. That I wrote with Dre. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> this Dre. Uh, let me ask you. Uh, don't give me the title, cause I know they can't give out titles before uh-huh. it drops. <laughs> but can you give me maybe the message behind it? Mm, yeah, but if I do, it kind of the title. <laughs> oh, Jasmine. But, <laughs> okay, does it involve uh, a man? No. Oh gosh, Mm-mm. it's a woman empowerment song. Yeah, it's it's an empowerment song for for everyone. I okay, think. so it's an empowerment yeah. song. Is it a dance it's song? Kind of funny too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> I I like to do things, yeah, a little different, you know. A little different. <laughs> and a little a little with fun also. Different fun, empowerment song. <laughs> okay, I kind of know where you're getting it. Is it something that they're gonna play in all the clubs, or is it gonna be? Something that you listen to in the car. Clubs or car? Both. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm trying to get it out of her, but I just can't get it out of her. It's up-tempo. Yeah. It's up-tempo. It's up-tempo. Okay. Is, is, is it fist pumping? Cause I, uh, I, no. That's all. No. no. It's, it's more like soul pop. Oh. I would say, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Jasmine. I, I've got it. <laughs> I was trying to get it, but I don't got it. <laughs> Make sure you check out the second episode with Jasmine Cara. And I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to talk about like her hobbies and her favorite foods and also her favorite movie. So make sure you check out that episode. But yeah, Jasmine, stay tuned. Yeah, you can't got go it. nowhere. I told your manager, <laughs> she can't go nowhere. 